Hey, everybody. Another Sunday with y'all favorite crew on the face of the earth. Maybe in the universe, like everywhere, not just on earth. We just the best ever. So we are here for another Sunday show. Y'all tune in. As always, make sure you're sharing it and all this stuff. I'm going to tell you that again, but I want you to go on and share it now so that y'all can catch this fire song, this fire intro that Debbie J about to jam her ass off to. And Don't I get in here and let's go. <laughs> Podcast, who won't the smoke? Coming raw and uncut, like who won't the dope? Whatever you want, they for sure to cover the topic. From racial issues to fashion, flies to cop it. Y'all ain't never get it like this, cause they ain't never did it like this. We on our sh this the way the cookie crumbles for y'all. She gon' bring the inspiration to all. You know what's up with her. And this shit manifesting is a vision. And y'all gon' love TJ, cause he the realest. From the heart of a mob, they the start of it all. You looking for a high, learning how to add your rug. The professor, not the lesson, coming at you with the lessons. Get your edge if you know what's good for you. They educated, but they still keep it hood for you. Won't need another, this one here really do it for you. Baby, you can't afford it. Debbie J was gonna turn up. I am sure for the way she party off the song every single time. I love it. Yeah, hey, good so beats, y'all. What you say, Debbie J? So it's good beats. Yes. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank y'all for coming to the show. I feel like I was at a Baptist church when they get a welcome and they be like, "Welcome, welcome, welcome." First, giving honor to God oh, and my pastor and the pulpit guests. But we in this thing, we ready to go, y'all. So make sure, as always, that you have subscribed or followed or liked us on all platforms. We out there, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, LinkedIn. Connect with us on all platforms. Make sure that you share the show to your page so everybody can see it, okay? And then if it's somebody out there that doesn't have Facebook, send them over to YouTube so they can tune in and interact with us. Gerard got us this fancy stuff where they can talk to us through YouTube now. We set up and yes. ready to go, okay? <laughs> yes! So we want to continue to grow the audience as always because the floor is yours. So we want to hear from a lot of people. So share it, okay? And thank y'all for tuning in. What it do, crew? What's up, what's up? What you doing? <laughs> it's Halloween, y'all. I'm ready for some candy, but uh, yeah, I hey, all y'all stomach gonna be hurting tomorrow. Watch. Wait a minute, oh, but James, why you got king size stuff over there? Like you didn't on, get no guns because they was on sale. So all the neighborhood kids gonna love me. All the neighborhood kids gonna love. Me. But then when they come next year. They're going to be in for a rude awakening. They're going to get them look candies next year. No. <laughs> no, you set the bar. You keep it up. Yes. <laughs> See, that's a red, red flag, flag right there. Yeah. Don't start something you cannot finish. I'm going to add that to my list over here. But we're going to get into I that a little bit later. Too. And I do. But like Miss Cookie said, we need y'all to like, share, and subscribe to all of our platforms because we're trying to bring y'all that great, great content but we need your support too we don't want to just be talking to each other and y'all not interacting with us but um like i said the discussion for tonight is awesome it's for the married people monogamous couples and people who are meeting each other for the first time so here's the topic <clears throat> what red flags will cause you to wave the white flag i.e 
James handing out king size this year and bite size next year. That's a red flag because you're not being consistent. So, <laughs> uh, okay, we hear often that there is no perfect, that no one is perfect, and that we need to keep an open mind regarding relationships. While we can't always see the real face of our partners until a long time has passed, there could be some subtle red flags early in a relationship that may indicate that they are not relationship material. You should reconsider whether or whether or not to devote your life to them. All right, James, I'm gonna put the ball in your court. I feel like picking on you tonight. Let's, but what, what do you feel is your red flags? Um. I got a couple too, like you, but off the top of my head, this, <laughs> mm -hmm. this is a red flag for me. People who lie for no reason. Boy. Oh, hold up. Like hold that. up. Hold up, though. I can understand people who lie for a reason. For example, if you with somebody and you want to be with them and you messed up and you did something bad and you know they find out they're going to leave you and you lie, I understand that. I understood. Hold on, Deb. Let me finish. I understood why you lied in that situation. That that makes sense to me. But what don't make sense to me is people who lie for no reason. Like, for example, if I was like, Cook, what you eat today? And she said, oh, I ate Taco Bell. But she went to Whataburger. Like, why, why, like it just don't make sense. The, the simple lies. <laughs> Little stuff that's like, it, it's like very perplexing. Like, why would you lie about that? But, you know, if you own some 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 snake stuff or whatever and you don't want to that to catch up with you, I ain't gonna lie. That those lies make sense. If if you don't want to get a speeding ticket and you were lying to the officer about you trying to rush to the hospital for your sick grandmother or something, that lie makes sense. But if you just lying for no reason, like because you just one of those people that like what Kevin Hart say, I just like the lie. Like one of <laughs> that, 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 that's different. But justifiable lies. Not to say that it's okay, but I'm just saying that I understand it. Go ahead, Dad. What you got to say? Wait a minute. I want to say before, James, before you pass it. So the food scenario, you know, this with this whole diet keto kind of craze. So what is Miss Cookie was like, you know, I had this keto friendly, friendly salad, but she really had um, water burger. Is that the same? or? Well, it depends. If her diet doesn't matter to me, then it's like, why? But if she was getting on my ass about I need to eat right and she eating this and she one of them people that post fit for life, eat clean, train dirty, blah, 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 all the time, <laughs> then that goes with her brand and then she lied yeah. because she slipped, that lie makes sense. I mean, she's a personal trainer, so that lie would make sense to me. But if she's just lying for no reason, it's like, why? Trying to impress you. I just gotta, like, whether the lie is justifiable or not i just got to understand the why like stuff just got to make sense to me i can be upset about it or mad about it but if it's like i'm mad but i understand why the person lied that it, it makes sense not that it makes it okay but yeah. it makes sense that's all i'm saying okay i got you that makes sense okay but let's let's hit back on that other little point that you made you said that um if they lie because it may hurt that person do do we still supposed to come back and tell the truth, or we're gonna to continue to say that lie, or continue so to build about that lie? It we depends. Relationships. It depends. If if you got some lipstick that you love, and I think it's trash, it don't bother me. I'll lie about it because I don't want those problems. But oh, okay. I mean, you know, like it's I mean, not that big of a deal. Men lie basically. all the time. Women lie all the time. There's some guy that you like. Nah, baby, you look good. Like you know, he doesn't put on an extra here and there. You know what I'm saying? But you don't want to hurt his feelings. Like, you done lied probably to some guy and told him he was the best you ever had because that's who you currently with. Who knows? I don't know. Like, women lie, too. Like, I think women lie when it comes to being nice and stroking egos. Honestly, I yeah. feel like women lie more than men in those type of situations because there's a lot of guys out here that don't think that they're trash or think they're, like, the biggest in the entire world. Like, like bro, I'm 5'7". I'm not the, you know, like... I just gotta, I'm taller gotta, than you, James. Real. But you know, like, but it's some women that'll make every guy feel like he King Kong. And some women feel like that's their job as a woman, but it's still a lie. <laughs> Look at Cook over there taking a head. So why is that an issue with the relationship? 
Why is that an issue in relationship? Why would that? Because dudes, because a lot of dudes got like she just she beat me to it. Because a lot of dudes got ego, and a lot of yeah. women are sensitive, and that's why men lie to women because they don't want to hurt their feelings. But a lot of guys like esteem more. Like honestly, in today's culture, like it's like You're sensitive. No, well, I'm just gonna take it a different direction. Like what I'm saying is like women. It's almost like women should be more accepting of men cheating, but for a man, it's like the ultimate betrayal because of our egos. Because men mm -hmm. look at it like it's a physical thing, but a lot of people think that women associate intimacy and relationships with a mental and affection. So there's more of a connection. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's more of an ego thing. So, but but since we're talking about it being a red flag, why is that a red red flag in a relationship? was oh for me the, the the line for no reason part just because it doesn't make sense like i can understand a lie that makes sense because we all lie like you know you you put somebody in front of me that says i never lie they just told a lie right there i can understand <laughs> i can understand a lie i just don't understand people who lie for no reason or people who just tell like these elaborate stories like well it depends if it's entertaining i'm, I'm one of those people that keep it going like for real then what happened but that is different though. Like, but if somebody's lying to me, it's like annoying. It's like, why are you lying about this? Like, so it's it's just gonna kill the, the trust in the relationship, I guess is what you're saying. Uh, uh I guess so, because you you just I think there's something psychologically wrong with people who lie for no reason. People who lie for a reason that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. DJ. Are y'all sure y'all ready for me? Like a mother in the list. Let me get my list together. <laughs> and the Lord said, read. And I read it. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> okay, so there's a whole list. Let's go through it. There's physical abuse, verbal and emotional abuse, and addiction. Um, having untreated mental issues that you haven't dealt with with your past. I need to go see a therapist. The inconsistency, gaslighting, narcissism, um, possessiveness you undermine me or put me down and i can't tell you how i really feel without you thinking it's an argument and i'm gonna just cut my lips okay. right there and, and i guess for my thing and maybe i'm misunderstanding but if we're talking about red flags we're like what are sort of things that you can observe in the beginning if you're dating you know that, some of those you know things you can pick up you can okay. pick up on some of these things honestly in the beginning the inconsistency hey, that's, that's you trying like to build on likes though like i think that's a little different than like because some of those things go without question but honestly everybody don't leave for all those reasons but i like when i think of a red flag i think of things that may not maybe may not bother everybody but it's just something for you personally like the one I came up on the list who said they are still obsessed with their ex or they are constantly blaming their ex for the for the relationship fairy. Like not just mention it, but it's a constant just the ex, the ex, the ex. So, I mean, is, is that a red flag or is that something that you like, you know, it might be a red flag, but we can work through it. Oh, I don't I wouldn't think me personally, I wouldn't think that's a red flag. I mean, they're not necessarily comparing it. They're just going off of their experience and their last experiences with their ex. So and every so, time y'all talking, he uh, come up. He it brain, should, be, it should be a red flag, though, because that I guess to me, the things that are red flags are like that are just like mad annoying. Like if I'm talking to somebody and everything brings up a negative situation about their ex. Yeah, that's mad annoying. Like, I don't like I don't care enough. I don't want to hear it. So, like, if you constantly like if it's a dish in the sink, oh, my ex used to leave dishes. Oh, I couldn't stand that. Blah, 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 blah. If somebody <laughs> uh, somebody uh, get in the car a certain way and they <laughs> oh, I used to hate the way my ex just jump in the car. Like, God, like you're not over that person. So that would be a red flag because I don't want to hear about that person all the time. So that well, when you put it like that, yeah, that's annoying. Yeah, you, that, that's annoying. Mm -hmm. And maybe you can say something to that person. Okay, are we saying red flags can? Um, oh, we're saying red flags that make you give up the um, hand up or hold up the white flag. So you're 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 totally surrendering. I don't want to do this. Yeah, because so you're saying someone yes. that's doing that, you yes. will. Yes. But you wouldn't try to work through that. 
No. Because it sounds like to me that they're not over the X. That's and, why and, and if it's in the beginning, I'm not emotionally invested enough to have to work through. Like, yeah. if I'm on the first date and somebody, every time something happened, like, oh, my ex used to order this and I used to hate, I don't even want this type of like it's a red chick, please. It's a red flag. Like I don't want to hear about that. And if I'm not, if I'm not emotionally invested, like I can leave for whatever reason I choose to. So typically, the the deal breakers on like when you initially meet somebody are predominantly going to be red flag because it's what's a red flag? Yeah. And it's a warning. Stop. Like uh, uh-uh, yeah. let me go down. Yeah, I don't even want to go down that road. But like if you if you down that road with somebody two three years in or two even two or three months four months in, like you. You didn't pay attention to those red flags because you still there. So to me, yeah. red flags are things that happen from the onset in the beginning. Like, oh, that's a red flag for me. I gotta go. Like, I don't even yeah. want to. what you think, Miss Cookie. So I agree um with James. It's those little things that sometimes we try to overlook. But like once you get down the road and you look back on it, you like, yeah, I've been seeing this from jump because red flags a lot of times they there, but you don't pay attention to them until it's too late like too there's late. a mix up happen and you look back and you say dang that was that was messed up um i think that it starts with us knowing what we do and don't want because sometimes we just here trying to be in a relationship with anybody and overlooking everything and you yeah. should so like things that i see when we was talking about the red flag list some of this stuff on there i read i was like yeah i absolutely agree with it but a lot of my stuff wasn't even in that list so like strained relationships with their kids to me, Ooh, that's, that's a red one. flag. That's a good one. Yes. Because a lot of times when they come in, it's an excuse as to why you don't have a relationship with your kid. But is that the mm-hmm. real reason? Like, don't just, to me, don't just let it ride and be like, oh, yeah, he said such and such. So, yeah, that's cool. Like, that's something that I need to know. I need some more information about that. Um, and then people that are completely codependent on other people. And Deb said something about like being narcissists. I thought about people that play victims. And so then they mm-hmm. become codependent on other people because they always need somebody to blame for everything that happened. Shit, where's your, you ain't got no accountability. So that's a red yeah. flag for me. Like take accountability for things that are going on. Ain't nothing ever your fault. Never in life, really. So those are some things that kind of came to mind when I was looking at it. But those are things that you can look over in the beginning so not taking accountability in the beginning maybe we're talking about the dish in the sink dang it's a dish in the sink i don't know who left here instead of let me go wash this dish and just take care of whatever it is and down the road not taking accountability maybe damn it's 200 dollars gone from the account where did it go oh dang well i had it but it was an emergency so i have to have it because of such and such so it just gets bigger over time like it starts as tiny things because in the beginning we're trying to be our best self when we dating people and keep them red flags under wraps, but over time it all come out. Yeah. Yeah. And especially that one right there about the kids with a strained relationship. Yeah. You know, there could be a number of reasons. So it's not, I like that you we're saying it's a red flag. That's not saying that it's over, you know. But for me, yeah. like, hey, I would want to know, like, hey, what's going on with you and your your daughter or your son? Like, what's the issue? Because that could it could be a number of things, especially if um the custodial parent has you know full custody or you know majority custody they can really shape how your kids view you how they interact with you and it can be a difficult situation to your so to your point absolutely agree that could be a red flag but it rewards for me uh for the discussion mm-hmm. okay so i was seeing these red flags as something else okay what is the time frame? Is there a time frame or we are uh, that we're putting these first date, first couple of dates that we're seeing these things that we don't like? Because my deal too, to go a different route, we give up too easily too. You gotta understand you're trying to get to know somebody and you see one thing wrong and oh bye, that's a red flag. Bye. Not giving this person, are we giving this person a chance to explain why they do this or that? Or are we giving this person a chance to correct that behavior? Or are we just seeing something, oh, he showed up 10 minutes late, red flag, bye, ain't dating him. He showed up musty. Well, maybe he had to run, maybe he was trying to rush off of work or something to come meet you to be on time. Or what, what, what? But it's what, not what perspective giving, are we not, coming in at? It's not giving up. I mean, I just feel like if you're not 
emotionally invested in somebody or you haven't invested time, energy and effort into somebody, you don't, it's not, to me, it's not giving up. It's just moving on. Like, I just think those like, cause they're, they're, we've all been in so many situations or relationships where we wish we would have pulled yeah. away at the beginning yeah. when we first saw those things, you know, as yeah. opposed, but it's difficult to do when you're kind of tested, tested whether it be time yeah. or- That's why James topic, when James named the topic, he said, what red flags will make you wave the white, white flag? So it's not that all red flags will make you call it quits, but that's the discussion, okay. like which one? So I like, you know, I think it's different for each person. We got Miss IC in the building. It's always a pleasure, ma'am. Hey, hey, I've been listening to y'all as I was trying to get home. Yeah, right on. So, uh, yeah, we'll we'll go ahead and start. Well, circle back to you since you're jumping on. You know, we're talking about this red flag thing and um, depending on what, you know, phase of the relationship you're in. But to James' question is what what red flags will make you wave the white flag? So, oh, I, I feel like a, le- a lot of it is uh, aggressive overtone when we when we talk uh, emotional dependency. Uh-uh. So let's talk about those two, especially at first and then um, overtones. Why is that an issue with you? Because that 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 states a lot of, about the person's emotional state, mental mindset. Well, I don't want, I don't want to make it mental, but it does speak a lot of the way that they they talk to you. There's an underlying reason on the way they speak and in the tone in which they speak. Give an and, example. Give an example. Uh, that's just like if, if say there's something in the car, you accidentally, let's say we on a date, I accidentally waste something in your car. It may be just a little bit of fell off on the seat and you go, oh, I just I just shampooed my carpet. Mm-mm, that's a red flag for me, because if you can act like that over just something that was spilled in your car, then there's something that you'll you'll go another level if it's something that's a lot different. So that I've experienced that. So those are red flags for me. Because eventually what happens is when you look over them and you go further into the relationship, it begins to show out in other different different things. And then it goes back to when you begin to have conversations that you may have you may not agree on. And so the atonement in which you speak to me lets me know your your how you feel about it, but it basic on how you're going to react to it. So yeah. Yeah, it matters to me. So to mm-hmm. an aggressive overtone is like a in your in your opinion, like an overreaction and. Is that the best way of saying it? I don't really want to call it overreaction because that's their reaction. But for me, it's in the manner in which you do. You know, sometimes if you waste something in the car, it would be more like this. Oh, don't worry about it. You know, we'll stop and get a towel. We'll get it up. But if you automatically just go to the left, just in a place of. um, Like somebody, anger, barking, like somebody barking on you. Yeah. I, I, I just, that doesn't, that's, that's, yeah. that's it's or, a little bit. Of, go I ahead. Get, I get it. Or like, if you were saying something and somebody, kind of got sense of like what you mean what you say you know like yeah that's like, and and nothing. all that right there because i mean why does it have to why do we have to do that and then by the language and, if, and if anytime i feel like i got a cringe when we talking in a conversation it's a no because i don't speak to people harshly but my daddy ain't never raised his voice in the manner either so yeah. i don't feel like men should do that and women either but i ain't a woman talking to a woman i'm in a male female yeah. relationship and what does that mean down the road in a relationship i mean what could that potentially mean what it begins to be is it's something that was an underlining underlining a uh, matter that they never dealt with and it was a trigger for them or just the fact of you know they may he may have never had anything and of course he, now that he has this that and the other there's this line of the way he protects things because he's either living in survival mode or he appreciates what he has and you're supposed to do that but yet and still when there's an action to a reaction to certain things those are they're, those are red flags and we don't pay enough attention to them. we just kind of brush them off and maybe the verbal can be in later on become physical. It's, uh, that's what I was yeah. thinking was domestic right. violence because it usually don't start with somebody busting you in your face with something. Right. It starts with those, the way they talk to you, mm-hmm. being controlling, those little things, and it builds from there. Mean? And people always don't understand how folks stay in domestic violence relationships so long because by the time they start getting their tail whooped, a whole lot of other stuff doesn't happen. Right. And they've invested time and swept it under the rug and because it usually just don't start out with all that violence. Right. What you allow is what 
people feel like they can get away with, and then it'll escalate to yes, right. further and right. further to get and away. That's, what I, that's why I was saying when I did the emotional part, I've had it where you know you're my medicine, and when you look at that medicine has a drop off at the at the you drop it off, you got consultation, and you pick it up nine time out of time, nine time out of ten we skip. Excuse me, we skip the consultation, which is the side effects to different things. And anytime you get somebody get talking about you, they medicine, see you heal, they, they want you to heal them or you helping them heal, but they're making you sick. And that's not how it's supposed to be. I'm not yeah. the doctor in the relationship. I'm not the person to help you get there. Now I can, you know, lead you to where you need to be, but you can't be codependent on me. And so many times we allow ourselves to be the sacrificial sacrifices in relationships to codependency. I'm not doing that. I'm not going, I'm, I'm not mm. dealing with this. And you know, another part of that too is that it, uh, and I'll let Deb move to this next question. I okay. come in. But what happens a lot of times, the wrong person can take your weakness that you have told them about, that you have shared with them and hope that they're going to be sensitive and attentive to, and they use that against you. So you really need to make sure um, that you're careful about sharing stuff with people like that in the beginning because they can take yeah. full advantage of you. So DJ. I'm going to let you take this question. So just real okay. quick. So this is from the Greenwood podcast page. And this is from um, Trish Williams. So Trish is viewing us. For whatever reason, sometimes that thing don't show the name. So I just want to put the name out there. It's from uh, follower Trish Williams. Okay. Well, her question was, well, her statement was, another red flag is how they interact or don't interact with their family members. That shows you how uh, you, you knock me off. <laughs> hey, man, my hey, there you go. There you go. <laughs> um, that shows you how they deal with the ones they love. That shows a lot. I'm on the fence with that one. I I don't have a close knit family, so I don't really be interacting with them like that. So I don't want you to take that personal of how I'm going to treat you. But I just wasn't grew up. We didn't. I didn't grow up in a tight knit family like that. Yeah. Uh, me personally. Um, but if you do have a tight knit family, more power to it, get that love. But then you have to know who that family, who that person's family is. Are they negative? Are they abusive? Are they alcoholics, drug addicts? They yeah. might want to just separate themselves from them, that type of family, because they, they want to break that generational curse. They don't want to be around that. Not saying that they don't love them, but I'm not going to deal with you. I don't want that in my life. I don't want my child to see that kind of relationship. So, yeah, yeah me personally, yeah. I'm backing off. Yeah, I agree with you on that. Now, I can see if someone were saying, like, well, if somebody was disrespectful to their mama or talk to their daddy yeah. crazy or something like that, then I could agree with the yeah. person who made the comment. But if, if you have an issue with someone just because of the type of, you know, because I feel like, you know, life is like a deck of cards. You know what I'm saying? You don't get to choose your family. So yeah. I, I don't think that someone should hold that against somebody mm -hmm. because of how somebody chooses to. OK, so can we hey, can we flip that to friends, though? So you get to pick your friends. You can't pick your family. So can you judge them off of their friends now? Well, uh, you know, I guess it depends. I think it depends. It depends. Okay. So remember, the show is what red flags will make your way to white, white flag. So mm -hmm. it's something to think about, but I don't think that you automatically write somebody off because of their friends or because they don't have a tight knit family. And just before you move to the friends, I'm thinking about the family part. For someone who's very close with their family, I could see that it could be a red flag. That don't mean a red flag mean, again, I'm done with you, but I think it warrants to what we talked about with Cookie earlier, warrants some further discussion just to see, mm -hmm. hey, why aren't you close with your friend? And you, you might find out, like, hey, this joke was just that his family wrote him off because he or she is full of it, you know? So, again, I think it just takes um, some further discussion. And My then bad, Green Intellectual wrote something when y'all were talking about the parents' the relationship with the parents. Green right. Intellectual said disrespecting my parents from junk should be an automatic shutdown. So not just how they interacting with their family, how they treat your family when they meet your family. True. Yeah, that's heavy, man. Now that's you know, a red flag, a white flag. I'm throwing in the flag. <laughs> like you ain't, you ain't dealing we're with not that. doing that. No, we're not gonna <laughs> do because I don't dis I might not deal with them, but you ain't gonna disrespect them. Yeah. Just like I can pick on my brothers and sisters, but you can't. No. What you think? I, I see. Type thing. <laughs> Disrespecting the um the parents. I mean, no, I mean, we just not going to go there. I mean, I'm, I'm, I agree. I'm, I'm not going to disrespect someone's parents. Um, now, let me say this, though, because sometimes we say disrespect the parent, but some, 
how let me say the situation because you got some parents that will try to test you in front of in front of your their sons and daughters to Which try to saying? check and see how you gonna act in response and then so what am i supposed to do now respectfully i'm gonna give a reply respectfully as i can but i'm not gonna let you belittle me or talk crazy to me because that's exactly. what they do some people will try to run you off so you kind of have to know or you know the the vibe than the situation that you're in because they will they will they will try you but i will never be it will never be a disrespectful response but i'm not going to let you treat me any but then i will i will expect i should say too for the man that i'm with to address his parents in a way if to say hey mama or daddy this not right because yeah. I, I that's where i that's where i was taking it that's what i was thinking because i think sometimes some people they can be a 30 40 year old adult but when they get around their parents they go, they revert and become this child and their mm -hmm. parents treat them like a child. So if you're with that person, they're going to try to treat you the way that they treat their child, you know? And so for me, it's like, I'm not going to be rude or disrespectful to anybody's parent, but I'm not going to back down or I'm a pretty much, I'm going to let it be known. I'm an adult. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm never going to go, I'm not going to revert and become a child because that's the way you choose to act around your parents. They can talk to you any kind of way. And yeah. ask you all kind of crazy or inappropriate questions because I'm not gonna let anybody. I, I got my own child to take care of, so anybody gonna talk to me like that? And I'm gonna mm -hmm. let that be known. And if that, and if someone thinks I'm being disrespectful because I don't revert to a child like you do, then you can take your, yeah. your white flag and do what you do with it. No doubt. And I think too, we talk about red flags, how they going one way. We might be suspicious about the other person, about the person that's doing the disrespect. But I'll be suspicious about the person who allows their parents to be disrespectful and i'm gonna be wondering like what am i getting myself into you know so that's gonna be my red flag in that situation right there i like this comment right here from um, from trish again she says i think that red flags and waving them are specific to each individual the key is to know yourself self and set healthy boundaries and stick to them good point here's okay one. so oh, i'm sorry go ahead go ahead, go ahead. I was about to say, I, okay, I want to redo my list because now that I've got a breakdown, my red flag to white flag. Yes, um, I, I did like the 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 thing with the kids. When I'm in a relationship with someone, they have to understand I'm a package deal, and they don't have a relationship with their children. I I don't even I don't even want to even say, well, they baby mama won't let them see them. Well, take her to court. There's things that you can legally do. Show proof. It may put the people in her life and fight for your rights. But you just laying down and not having a relationship with them still don't fit. Sits right with me. I don't care how tough of a baby mama she is or whatever. It's still because I want you to treat my child like your child, but you ain't even treating your child like nothing. So it doesn't work for me. So my red flag goes to a white flag. I'm throwing it in. Yeah. cannot do that and then for the one hey where the parents are running the relationship and telling you what to do and you can't stick up for yourself as a person and for your relationship no nah, that's a red flag turn to white flag that's yeah right blank. so there's one i see there was a follow-up to your um earlier comment you want to address it it says i see i agree with i see the unnecessary aggression i've experienced that it became overbearing and overwhelming to me always ready to pop off that's too much uh yeah and it begins to get you to a place that you don't even want to have conversations so you begin to really digress in who you are in the relationship and uh for me i was a free spirit and i began to feel like a caged bird and that and that just that was not me and anything that takes you from who you are mm -hmm, it's a red flag you i mean and so many times we'd be like you know they working through stuff well work through it However, you should work through it a little bit, you know, more a little bit, you know, sooner before we got together. However, I still entered into it knowing that I had saw that. So I do take my my, you know, my responsibility in going forward with it. In the end, it didn't, you know, in the way I wanted it to. However, that person's, you know, a better person for themselves now. And I'm thankful for that. Um, and I want to tap into what Cookie had said earlier, and then Debbie J just ch chimed in about the children. It matters, especially when you're being a blended family. I'm very hands on with my with my children and we laugh and we have a good time. And um, one of the, you know, their fathers, you know, are present, you know, one of one, two of them and one has been there for all of them. And my thing is to get in that. I don't want to feel like we're the liberals and they're the conservatives. And then we got to do family things. And we over here acting like ah, and they over here like what in the world? 
you know, or you don't, you know, know how to sit and, you know, do things with them or to balance the, you know, the, the relationship of, you know, children being involved. So it really does matter when you have children and you're moving forward. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not expecting you to come in to, to, to replace their father. You're coming in as an additive, whether that's male or female, just to add to that, to the life of the person and their child that's coming into your world and you're combining it together. And everybody don't have, you know, happy go-go's, but we can also find a, a, a even playing field to make it work. But you got to be already doing it, as they say, before we get together. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Set the foundation, because if you ain't already set it for yourself, honey, I already know we get together, it ain't gonna be set either. So, hey. Eh? <laughs> yes. 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 So another red flag is how you present yourself on social media. And this uh, green intellectual said, I'm by no means insecure, but constantly liking and or commenting on half naked pictures. Why? So. Wait, what James get off on you ass said? He had a trick or treater to come get one of them king size bars. Oh, I'm about to say, find out James liking them pictures. <laughs> <laughs> well, I fully agree. But, and I think that this is something that comes with like being in a relationship because by all means if you single and free and living your best life do what you do but if you're trying to be in a relationship with a person you shouldn't be nowhere liking commenting on nobody else have naked nothings and i feel like oh see i told you the trick-or-treaters came i told you <laughs> well and, i i feel different about that I but i feel like that's I feel like for the, the other person, not the one that's coming and liking, that other mm -hmm. person, you got to set boundaries about what you okay with. Because some people yeah. may be okay with this in their relationship. They may not be bothered at all by the comments, the likes, the loving on pics, all that stuff. They may be good for them. But if your relationship, if that's not good for your relationship, then y'all got to talk about that and um, do what's best for y'all's relationship. Because, I mean, just me. Speaking for me, yeah. No, I don't want to see you always come in on some naked. If every time I look on your phone, you looking at titties and booty flying and flapping all over the place <laughs> and everything slipping and slanging here and there, get <laughs> off of that. Like y'all just you watching Pornhub all day. Stay off of that. Oh no, not that. No, so I feel what well, she's saying. Have naked pictures. Yeah. So well, she did. Right, right. Instagram models all are doing that too. But yeah. it can't it can't escalate. So that's the issue with that, right? Today. Is looking at half naked pictures like them. That's probably not all that's going on, and it's an assumption because I don't know, but I could see the issue with that because we know it go down in the DMs. They say, Man, <laughs> listen, if you're bold enough to do it open like that, ain't no telling what's happening, and that's speculation. I'm gonna end it on that. So, here's another we're getting some good comments. I want to make sure we address these right here. Um, um D DJ, you want to take that? Okay, I say that because I've experienced where they felt like it was inappropriate to comment on a friend's body and other things right in front of me. Then when I brought it up, you want to blow up and gaslight. See, commenting, that's why I said it escalates. See, yeah. yeah, I mean, I get the commenting. Okay, what you what are you commenting? Nice, nice pick or no some fat titties? I like that shit. You know, like come <laughs> let me motorboat or something. Like, what are you writing in the comments? motorboat. <laughs> Where you get you know? No, Wait, how you doing there? <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> but I wouldn't read. I mean, if I see a good looking man, I'm gonna like the picture. I'm I'm sorry, but I'm not gonna be all in the comments. Dang, I wish you was here with me instead you of my man. Or, you know, yeah, no, it's not that I'm being thirsty. If you look good, you look good. Hey, God bless you. Bam, you get a she said hard. it wasn't. She, she, said it wasn't in the she said it wasn't in the comment. It was in her face. He did yeah. it like in front of her. That's what I'm saying. So he felt the comfortable thing. then, I'm guessing. Like, okay, it was just, I'm just liking the picture. That's it. No, because I mean, I don't no. know. I think it depends on the person you're with. Because a lot of girls are mad. It's like, some of the coolest girls are the girls that be like fake gay. They'll be like, fake gay. Like, you know, you're not like gay gay, but you like one of them girls that can always. Be like, babe, look at that girl boo. She got a fat ass. You know, like, where That's it's what like, I was going to say. It matters if it's the same sex. Like, am I, look, am I, like heterosexual and I'm looking at other men or am I a girl and I'm looking at my homegirls like damn you look good like that make a difference too 
What are we talking so about? Wait, I'm, I'm funny story. So De- funny Debbie said that, James. Yeah, let's give a little more context to that. So call. what happened was they were. Sounds like they were out on. They were out together eating. He yeah. does. He makes this comment in front of her as maybe a woman is walking by, talking inappropriate, or even on the phone or whatever. And then he leaves her at the restaurant. So there's a there's there's a build up to it. Yeah. Wait. Yeah. So he was on the phone with his whole <laughs> boy was telling her about this. That's other. different. Wait a minute. Oh yeah, that's disrespectful. Oh, he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have had to leave me um green <laughs> into into living, but he wouldn't have out of called the Uber my girlfriend because he had just no. been there and Am I, I probably he was they were on the date and he was on the phone with his homeboy. With his homeboy. Oh, that's flag day. number one. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, Debbie so, said. Debbie J said that's disrespectful. No, it's not. That's disrespectful. <laughs> that ain't just regular disrespectful. Okay. Oh, he, you saw and a girl so fine. So. You saw this boy like, hey, boy. <laughs> <laughs> No, man, baby, baby, I would have, I would have, if I would have had a whole glass of nice red, the highest glass of wine that they would have, or I would have ordered that first while he was talking, and I would have got it. And when he would have came, I had already have my 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 person on the way to pick me up. And then when I got ready to leave, I would have just dashed it on him and down and went on up out the door. I'm just yeah. talking about what I would. Do. Hey, I, I got said, a funny oh, story about that. Though. You gotta go and leave him in the bill. What's up, DJ? Yeah. Okay, so me and my ex-husband was in Walmart one night. Kid you not, this girl walked by with a fat booty. Kid you not. So I'm looking up because he's taller than me. I looked up at him and glanced to see if he was looking at her booty. So I did like that. He looked. So I said something. I said, did you just look at her butt? He's like, no. No, I didn't. I said, yes, you did. But I'm like, I did too. She had a fat ass. Like, you could not not look at it. It was, it was there. I'm not gay at all. But he was like, I saw him look. It was okay with me because it was it it stuck out literally. So I'm like, damn, myself. I'm like, it's not that I wanted it or her. It, it didn't bother me that he looked because I'm like that. It, it caught your eye. So mm. I mean, I don't get pressed on that kind of stuff, honestly. But you being very descriptive and all in the comments, nothing like you want that person. Yeah, that's disrespectful. But yeah. liking a picture with me don't press me. Okay. Here's a, uh, another comment. Me personally, I don't understand the social media aspect of a relationship. In my relationship, this was never concerned. This is my issue. It's okay to watch porn, but you can follow your favorite porn star or IG model or favorite anything on IG. Okay. So, you know, different strokes with different folks. I could see to uh, Green Intellectual's standpoint, if it's to that point where he's just, I mean, salivating over himself at the dinner, calling his homeboy, like, hey, I mean, I can see that's an issue. So yeah, it started yeah, off with the, um, liking the pages and who knows what else is going on, right? Yeah, he wasn't interested in that person. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he wasn't. Not the person he was with. Well, and I mean, to be calling your home, that She said it happened to her, so he wasn't. Yeah. You're, you're telling her he wasn't interested in it. Yeah. She's, I mean, yeah, it's not like she's not on the page. She hears y'all talking low, but y'all really yeah. not talking low. I'm just no, talking I was talking loud. I, was, I meant to be heard. Like, yeah, I said he wasn't interested in you. Well, honey, all I know is good that he got on, honey. He, it's good that he, he, I mean, he walked off. I hope he laughed, though. <laughs> I, I, I would have thought it was funny if I was there. Mm. Man, man. Well, well, we, um, we, didn't wanna, we got a question up here. It says, why do women in heterosexual relationships do that to their partners? Y'all don't want them to look at fat asses. Then y'all women look and tell your man them to look, then get mad. Yeah, some people that do that. Uh, girls yeah, are crazy. They want to play tricks on you, brother. Well, Debbie That's said why. she don't get mad. Yes, she do. No, I don't. No, I don't. I she didn't get she mad because she felt like she was in control of that particular situation, and she kind of borderline gave permission because it was like, uh, I can't. You know, like, get, I gotta stop you right there. I cannot what give no grown right man permission, like, bro. If it's like, if it's like, <laughs> is it okay for him to do that all the time? Like. Or what if it turned into a, not just a look? It's like, dang, 10, 15, Okay, the, a look and a stare is something different. This is a look. <laughs> nah. I, this I, is disrespectful. Damn. Well, I think, my question, I think my question would be with you is that you asked him, did he look first? Yeah, I did. I was, because I was being really funny. That's the control. Yo, what, no, I was being funny because, it. no, y'all have to understand, it wasn't your average size booty. It was a big booty, <laughs> so um, that that was the only reason why. Because it was funny, like, damn, that was a fat one. I'm sorry, like you could not miss that, even if you had one eye. 
your blind man could have saw her ass. So anywho, <laughs> yeah, they, they're saying borderline is not full permission either. I can or I cannot look. Be clear. That's what. He, that's what. I don't know who yeah. you can look. look. I mean, looking, staring is two different things. Look, staring. Damn. Yeah, for Come me, if, if, for me, if I would have been with, with my man, just if he did, I'd been like that. Like. Ass was really big, wasn't it? That would be mine. We wouldn't have been like, did you see that? I'd have been like, yeah, it was really, really yeah. large, wasn't it, sir? And that's how I was. Like, dang, that was big ass. Like, you asked okay. question, girl. You <laughs> asked the question. And then, and then led up to the funny part. But for him, that ass was question, funny. I mean, um, intell uh, Green Intellect, she was like, back to the abusive comment. Uh, Can you in can you give more insight to that one? Yes, yeah, she. Okay. Verbal abuse? I don't know. She just said back to the abuse comment. Let's see. I don't know which comment she's talking about. Was it the verbal? She said some people aren't aware of the difference in the forms of abuse. Most think that they are obvious, physical, but psychologically, mental, and emotional abuse is very real. I didn't miss the red flag. Yeah, that's what I said earlier about. I mean, I agree with you. It's not. It, I. I mean, we ignore. And mm -hmm. sometimes I, it's because of the, the relationships that we desire at that particular point in time in our life, and we just kind of go for it basically hoping that things will change you know as, as we go and in in, a, in the time that they don't because a person has to want to change they don't change simply because we get with them she said because no i didn't know what i was until it was and that's true and so don't even live in that space anymore it happened you can talk about it now and now you move forward knowing you know what those red flags are and that you don't, that you're not going to put up with and then you know how to gracefully bow out you know, I'm not saying you, you know, the bad, the bad, bad person. You're just not the right person for me. And at times I feel like we won't say that, that this is just not going to be a relationship that's going to allow me to to flourish and to to grow with you. And so let's just leave it where it is. And, you know, when I, you know, we can be those friends on the street, like, hey, how you doing? Yeah. So that's what, you know, that I would say. So with anything in this red flag segment, I would do that. You know, don't ignore the red flags. See them, mm. address them, and move on without that relationship. Um, what you said, you're moving forward, pending the papers being signed. Well, in the name of Jesus, them papers gonna be signed, right? Because it's all the different Jesus. ways that you can get that, okay? <laughs> if he don't sign it right there, honey, baby, put it on a public display. He got six, I think it's 30 to 60 days. And if he don't see it, it's gonna be granted anyway. You know, you are free and green intellectual. I don't even know you, but this the love segment is for you tonight because you just keep talking. You know, it is my prayer that you will release yourself because it was my word for the day. Release, honey. Anything that's not going to, any soil that's not causing you to grow and it's not going to allow you to, to get the fruit, to bear fruit and to live in your purpose and be fully who you are, it is not for you. But it is my prayer that you be released for every from every soul tie, every place that you have been hurt in, in the name of Jesus, and that you would just begin to know that you are worthy, right? Because one thing about it, when you price this, honey, you set the value of who you are. And we, then that's male or female. When we say, when we know we price this, we don't, it ain't about knowing your worth. It's the value that I'm set when I get into this particular atmosphere and setting. So from this day forward, honey, set the value as high as you want it and you leave it there and you keep moving. You no longer have to go back down an old road of what is and what you did wrong, honey, because that is the past and you are moving forward. So my love notice to you, release, honey, be free, honey. Face, forgive and go on and be free baby and that's it I, that's all i'm saying so love note has been said and done okay i'm gonna regret it. yes and there you i know. love a show like this where it just flow like gerard we just kind of threw your script to the side and just <laughs> had some conversation and Wait, then a love man. note just came out through and tied everything together I you love it. Yeah. Yeah. the end of the show yet bro <laughs> <laughs> Yes, thank you. I see for that love note. I feel yeah, like baby, you know your flowers. Time. Make sure you smell them. These are, I mean, I get these away, but you sniff these flowers for you on tonight. And every person that needs these flowers, these they are yours. Even my my cast, I love them. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. All right, y'all. What oh, amazing show makes me feel so warm and full <laughs> on the inside. <laughs> Don't forget to follow us on all platforms. Go do that because we have good conversation like this all the time. And remember, the floor is yours is expanding. We have something different for all the people out there. So you have so many different avenues you can tap into and watch the Greenwood, um, uh, T Wheel and his segment, the late night segment. Like it's so much stuff. So come in and get it. It's here for you. So live and learn and grow by it. I love this. So we're going to wrap up the show. Inspirational. She, she said, I love it. You all are amazing. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah.
Yes, and yes, yes. Flowers back, girl. Look at that. Yeah. See, see. <laughs> All right, Chris. So we gonna we'll give our parting Chris. thoughts. Um, Flex producer, let's start with you. What you got? Nothing. What? No, don't, don't, don't act like that. That is the wrong answer. What? Hey, Gerard, right, right. that was like a flashback when I saw me do that one time. I was like, no. Yeah, yeah, I did get that feel, but I do got something for everybody. Pay attention. Okay. Let me borrow $20 to tomorrow. Oh, God. I'm slipping you. That's and it. next. That's it. Yeah, next. Move on. No. Debbie J, come through with some uh, <laughs> phenomenal because Flex tripping. <laughs> okay, what I am saying is everyone's talking about seeing the red flags in the beginning. Do not beat yourself up if you don't see them in the beginning. That means, from my opinion, that means that you are a wholehearted person and you want to see the good in people. And you're hoping that it's something more than what they're actually showing in a sense of something positive. So don't beat yourself up if you end up being in a relationship longer than just from the face value of those red flags and, and if you didn't see them hey that's cool you can always make a decision later if that's something you want to deal with or don't um don't want to deal with but don't beat yourself up if you didn't see them at the in the beginning because hey you wanted to see the good in person in that person and i am at fault of that my own personal self so let's just make sure hey change it on down the line if you don't like it you don't have to stay nowhere that you're not wanted in Peace. That's it. <laughs> that was good, DJ. That was good. Yes, All right, yes. Debbie J. Come through. Yes, James, what you got? Uh, let's see. Snickers, M&Ms, king size. Uh, well, first, uh, <laughs> happy belated birthday to my cousin Kiki, and happy pre-birthday birthday in advance to my sister Tisha. Birthday coming up this week. Uh, my parting thoughts relating to this subject is. Uh, past failures are guidepost to future success. I like Come that. On. Yeah. That's like that. Good deal, good. man. That was deep. Where that you get that from? A book. Man, that's what's up, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you bet it. <laughs> Gerard, they said good. they got you. Drop your cash out. And then they came through with a bouquet of flowers, I think that is. That ain't just a regular flower. That's the whole bouquet. Yeah, yeah, I would say Pro Black AF. Do what? What? That's his cash oh, app. that was a schedule. Pro Black AF. Oh, that's his. Oh, okay. Oh, he, he, he went all the money. All the money. Pro Black. That's where you said everything. Uh, inspirational sheet. Uh, well, you know, I kind of just shot it all out there, you know, a while ago. But um, I will let me say this because, of course, you know, uh, late Debbie J and James aren't from our hometown. But red flags come other than just in relationships, like boyfriend, girlfriend. You gotta have, you gotta find these red flags in your friendships because it's too much stuff going on right now in the world, and we have had a lot of senseless murders and gun, gun, gun wars down here within the last couple, last months, but basically within the last three weeks. And so my thing is on tonight is just praying for my hometown, and that um. God would intervene in that, not just God intervene in that, but as um, big brothers and big sisters that we would come back as adults to reach a generation that is really being lost at the hands of gun violence. And they're using it against one another. And somewhere we have to step up to be more hands on and get out here and be in, impactful and effective in our communities. Because one thing about it is, you know, we can say that they losing their way, but who coming back to save them? Cause if they just going on and ain't nobody coming back and I did say ain't and nobody's coming back to grab them and to pull them up, there's a problem. They're not just in it by themselves. Well, they are in them by themselves, but we need to go and we need to dig down and we need to say, Hey, we've been where y'all been. We've, I've, I've seen, we, I've lost friends to guns. And this is when I was in my twenties and yet it's still happening now, 20 years later, what are we going to really do? We can talk about it all day long, but until we put action behind it, yeah. then we're yeah. still in a, in a lost place. So, Hey, know those red flags too in our children because they're serving it behind closed doors and we don't know that things are really happening until things like this pop off. Then that's when we know that they got guns all over their pages and singing about murder and all these different things. So it's just a sad situation, okay? And um, the reason why I say that is actually Benji Cooper uh, was a couple of months ago back in August. We lost her to gun violence where the, the young man that died on last night was her baby. Of course, was her youngest son. 
Are you oh. serious, man? Yes. Wow. So it's it really is like that just wow. really that broke me right there. Like, yeah. So I wanted to make sure at least when we do have these platforms to speak on, I know that we do talk yeah. and we love and we do all these different things. And even if it's in your community, be a voice, speak up because those are red flags too. So when do we start waving the white flags then to say enough is enough? Since we gonna ooh, I feel that Lord. So we want to talk about red and white. We see the red flag with these kids, but we don't wave the white flag and say it's enough is enough. And then mm. when they we out here, we out here talking about free free baby. And we know baby guilty. Now we ain't free and baby. And Thank just because your kid ain't the one pulling the trigger. Don't let your right. kid be hyping somebody up either. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's yes. what I'm saying. And then you riding with them. So so if we're gonna deal with red flags across the board when we see them, let's start dealing with the red flags in our community and start waving the white flags and say enough is enough, and we finna stand up for this. Okay, I wasn't even going I like that. that. Mm-hmm. But thank the Lord, Holy Spirit. Yeah, oh. yes, just led you where you need to go. That was I good. Know you, took you my high man. I want you to know. Was, well, I'm just I'm here for all of it. That was good. <laughs> that was good. Yes. So my closing thoughts are: um, accept people as they are, but place them where they belong. So Ooh. stop allowing people like you can't make people be different or change them or whatever else. But you can you can dictate how you deal with them. So yeah, keep your peace. Do your part mm-hmm. to make sure that you're okay. Let grown yeah. folks be grown, man. Uh, shit, kids. Oh, uh, we all grown kids until too. Yeah. trying to have a grown person conversation, and then you wanna. Yeah. Cookie said, "Kids too." I'm with you. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. All yeah. right, y'all. So great show as always. Um, yeah. make sure that y'all are following everybody, not just the podcast. Follow us on our social media. Like, get in with. Debbie J in the house stuff. Hop in there with Inspirational Chic and she get on live and talk to you and whatnot. Get on there. Follow James on his page. Watch him playing basketball and all that good stuff. Hype him up. <laughs> Be there for him on the court. Yes. And then, you know, follow Flex. Make sure you're following all the different um, pages. I'm Coach Cookie on Facebook or Resilient Studios. Follow both of them. Go on to get in there so that way you can see what people have going on. Because, yes, as a group, it's amazing to get on here and to talk to everybody and to be a group, but we individuals too. And so everybody mm-hmm. here has something to offer individually. So just tap in. Let's get it. Okay. And my, my word promises to make sure that everybody can find y'all. So I put your individual pages on the page so that everyone can easily access you. Cool. All right. So let's play some DC. Uh, there it well. is. Yes, yes, yes. Well, so well. again, oh, oh, I see you. I see you. I got this. I gotta go. It's just time. They got ten minutes. They gotta go. (laughs) Yeah, because I'm gonna have to beat Courtney up if he ain't at home in time to watch the game. So, as always, like, share, follow, all that stuff. Tell your mama them. Tell your auntie them. And as I always say, get your haters on that too, because sometimes your haters is your biggest followers. They be on my page tougher than my friends. Okay, so make sure that they like and follow the page too. Hey, haters. So another great show, y'all. We finna yes. get the next drop the outro. Down here. Hey. It's my turn to tell y'all about my big bro Gerard and the podcast crew. From TJ to really it's Miss Cookie to Professor, and you can't forget about the inspiration shit. They talk about it all, got advice for us all. You'll never know how deep the talks will go. On the weekdays, the weekends, they be going live with the topics. Then they do the segment where the flow is yours. You can post your comments, uh huh. You can post your statements, yeah. yeah. You can ask your questions, uh huh. They can help you get your life moving in the right direction. If you need advice on marriage, advice on finance, advice on healing, advice on credit, this the podcast that you need to check out. Go ahead and tune in. You'll feel what I'm talking about. Hey, peace out, y'all. Till next time. Peace.